everyone, welcome back. I am Chesh from Chesh Breaks, and we're going to go and do a fucking mail time, which is going to be great. And I have some very special guests who I guess I'm just going to intro straight up. And that, of course, is Saucy and Dom from the Double Coverage Podcast. Lads, how the fuck are you? Going well. Going well, Chesh. Thanks for having us on. Really appreciate it, mate. No worries. I'm awesome, excited. Chesh. Glad to be here, mate. I know, so, right? Excited to break it down with the hey, uh... mail time. I heard you talking me up, motherfuckers. <laughs> we, love, we, love the, we love the fact that this is explicit like our podcast, so we can uh, just fucking swear. That's the best part. <laughs> so I do a magic podcast as well, um, and for everyone out there who's perhaps not up with the Australian lingo, when we say the word cunt, we have different inflections, right? So you might be a lovable cunt, or you might be a total fucking cunt and I want you to die. Um, on the magic podcast, I can't say the word cunt at all right because we do it for an american side it's a, a freelance opportunity that we got so we get technically sort of paid to do it ish um it's a whole thing around that but it doesn't matter um but <laughs> so our editor has never edited the podcast because that's what he edits my actual writing for magic the gathering one time i put up the podcast on the website and the description is explicit warning Thanks for that one, Sam. So, editor dude goes, um, just as a question, I noticed that the description this time says explicit language warning. Can we perhaps in future try not to have the explicit language? To which I responded like, sure, I will stop saying the word cunt. I never yeah, stop saying the word cunt. <laughs> it just doesn't listen. It's, it's just our lingo. That's just how it is. Yeah, everyone's a mad cunt. Think, you got mad skills, man. I don't, I don't think we've said it once yet on our pod. <gasps> what are you doing? Which is a miracle, because we use it in just <laughs> everyday lingo, which is unbelievable. Sauce and I behind the scenes, that's all we say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we just... Uh... We, 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 try keep it somewhat, we try to keep it somewhat reserved. Not reserved, but you know, we do we do drop it. It's you know, I like to have the the swearing at moments of emphasis. That's the that's where I'll bring it in because you know when you when you bring in the swearing too much, then you, your moments of emphasis can be lost. So when I'm when I'm really passionate about something, that's where you're gonna drop the f bomb or drop that something is, just so you know that people know that you're serious about what you're talking about right now. He's exactly. uh, very passionate at the moment, so it's good to have like it. So, uh, you're from the Double Coverage podcast. You don't just cover NBA cards, you cover sports cards and a little bit of trading card talk thrown in there. Yeah. Um, you talk about sports, it's not just cards. Sometimes you do talk about, you know, how Brady's basically like reached his pinnacle, um, how he can't, you know, do what he's doing forever. Sorry, yes. this is me just demonstrating the fact that, yes, I actually listen to your podcast a lot. Um, uh, no, I like that. We appreciate that, man. We really do. You know? We um, really I, We've got a big, big milestone actually coming up in probably the next week or so with regarding our podcast. As we always said, and we're not talking shit when we say it, but Sauce and I did not think for one second we'd have like an audience of like 30 plus people listening to the podcast a week not in our wildest dreams we actually did it just because we love the hobby and we wanted to connect with people and it was something that we always wanted to do in high school so it was like all right let's get let's get down get get down to it set aside some time plus the fact that we're because of covid we're in lockdown so we said well what else is there, is there to do than fucking make a podcast yeah if we haven't got time now <laughs> we're never gonna have fucking time so so literally we set aside the time and then pretty much it we're doing it and we met people like yourself and we can name so many other people like internationally over in America and some really good content creators just here in Australia as well, which are fantastic. Yeah, I, I can give them shout outs if you want. Mars Balls, Anthony Collects. And then obviously connected with Cherry. I, uh, I know that you know them very well, Chesh. Yep, good uh, people. Yeah, very good people. So they've been amazing to us and uh, we're forever grateful to them and everyone else. Yeah, I, it, it's funny you bring up Cherry. Actually, um, the, one of my one of my things when I had Grayson on, because Grayson calls me Cheesh, um, because he knows that it just pisses me off to no end. He, he doesn't actually call me Cheesh when he talks to me in person. He calls me Chesh, and I'm just like, so you you absolutely know? Yeah, I know, I know. You're like you prick. Um, 
but uh, he, he has this weird stigma. Um, and, and it's one of the things I used to have the stigma back when I used to own a card shop a very long time ago. And we're talking like shit 20 years ago when I was like in my twenties, uh, when I was running the CCG tower, um, which is the card shop owner is always your worst enemy. Not necessarily true, but everyone wants to think it is because they're the ones who are trying to get the best deal for them and their business whilst trying to be fair to you. And you might not necessarily think that that is fair. Um, Grayson, however, actually plays up on that much like an actor. He would chew the fucking scenery as much as he can to make himself out to be this big bad fucking monster. When in fact, we all know he's not the big bad monster. Um, but it, it's funny because some people somehow have taken that away that he he is this persona and it's like have you never known a musician that is usually when they're up on stage they have a persona they're at a gig they have a persona do you know an actor an actor isn't always that character they're always not always like the slimy car salesman that you think they are you know it, it's just yeah that that's just something I think. A, sli a slimy card salesman yes <laughs> That is absolutely the character that he portrays. <laughs> He's a great follower. He's fantastic. Um, all right, so I guess now that we've done your intro and shit, we should probably uh, have a look at what Chesh received. No, no shitty mail today. Um, I didn't receive a single package that was. Well, I did receive one that was no technically PWEs? no PWEs. I received one, and and I'm not going to call the person out by name because I know the person fairly well because they're an admin of one of the NBA pages. I tell you this, if I ever ask you to send me a Larry Johnson with two other Larry Johnsons, it doesn't mean that you grab two top loaders and then sandwich the base card Larry Johnson in between because it's for my PC. I paid you for postage and I fucking expect you to post my card correctly. With that out of the way, let's have a look at what I got. <laughs> nice. but, so he put top loader as one and he just put the card in the top loader? Well, this is the thing. There was three cards, right? Two of the cards, which were both inserts, were in top loaders. The third card, which was a base card, was sandwiched between the two top loaders, were then uh, wrapped with masking tape, with painter's tape, which was then encased in cardboard wrapped in painter's tape. And I was like, you've gone most of the way to protect this, but it's like you've just thought the base card doesn't really matter. Except it does to people who fucking PC it and who have bought that in an auction from you because they want the card. They didn't just bid on the card because they wanted to give you money. They bid on the card because they fucking want the card. It's not hard to put it in a fucking top loader. How hard is it? Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so apparently I went in a break and I don't remember. Uh, and I guess I got this very shiny uh, Dennis Smith Jr. optic. I, I've got no idea. I, that's whatever. Um, I... Uh, <laughs> you, had to, you, you had to sell them last year when you had his career year. Oh, really? Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm thinking of someone else. That yeah, I, think, I was going to say. You're, you're thinking of Finney Smith Jr. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's a guy. Has he ever had a good one? Um, what was no, this? Yeah. Atlanta. So this must have been boxbreak.com.au, I think. All right. So I went in a hoops premium break with boxbreak.com.au. Um, and I will say this, that uh, dude always... Uh, sends out stuff reasonably well packaged, which is nice. But um, the only thing I hate about... How you like the Jeep Premium? We'll get into that in a second. <laughs> I have some thoughts. Starting with the amount of trash that's in the set. Uh, Vince Carter, well, I guess Vince Carter's not really trash, but yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, Dwayne Deadman as Silver... Who the fuck is that? Jeff Teague, Jeff T. sure, uh, uh, Dwayne Dedman, and hey, at least I got a Cam Reddish out of it, so you know, whatever. I like Cam Reddish, good yeah. pile. Uh, they can go, let me over there, I've got a whole pile of, um, of Hoops Premium sitting on my table for auctions that I need to do at some point. Uh, the one thing I did get though was a Lights, Camera, Action, Hollow, Trey Young. Okay. Nice. Cool, cool. 
Uh, this was Cherry from the, this would have been Hoops Premium Multi-Packs. And of course, I lucked out and got the Jazz. This was a yeah. whole case stiff. and I got the Jazz. Was it a random? Yeah. Ah, stiff. I used to say I hate like PYTs um, because random's just a lot more fun. But as, as I'm progressing through this hobby now, uh, and this will be like coming up on 24 months in the hobby, uh, I'm starting to go more towards it's like I want to pick my team so at least I can get something I actually want and or can resell. Yeah. Because, um, what have we got? Let's see, Carl Malone base. We've got John Stockton base. We've got a John Stockton laser. We've got a Jordan Clarkson, <laughs> Mike Conley. Uh, I guess we've at least got a court side of someone. Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, great. Excellent. Uh, we got this... Jeez. It, it's just like... I have the worst luck at the moment with uh, Pick Your Teams. Um, so we've got... A Silver of Joe Inglis. Uh, and a Silver of John Stockton, I guess. John Stockton's good. Yeah, like good look... Life. Carl Malone and, and John Stockton, Stockton were amazing. They just got killed by Jordan like everyone else. Yeah, 100%. Um, so we got a Lakeser of the Carl Malone tribute. The mailman, the, the man that had, uh, he just had wives everywhere and, and affairs everywhere. <laughs> he was just slept around like an absolute, like a rat. It's funny you should mention <laughs> that. So I used to PC Carl Malone until I found out about the uh, statutory rape charges he got off. Yeah, there's actually a lot that I actually didn't know about till last year. Yeah, yeah. Around about the time The Last Dance came out, I started looking, looking into Carl Malone a fair bit more. And it's and like, it's oh, just, you're just not a nice ridiculous. human. Yeah. Not as bad as, uh, who was it, Latrell Sprewell? No. Who was the one yeah. that choked out his... Ah, uh, choked out his, his uh, coach. Oh, I yeah yeah bash that chick went into like almost half a million dollars or half a billion dollars in debt or something it's like what's his name um that played for baltimore ravens in the nfl i'm pretty sure rice was it rice is that the dude that, up on murder that be... no it was a... uh, no it was the guy be... no who was the one that beat up their partner uh yeah in the i know elevator in the elevator yeah <laughs> god they'll all blame it on the sport Oh, it was taken stop. That doesn't excuse you, dude. Um, 100%. Yeah. Emmanuel Murray in a laser. Emmanuel Murray again. Whatever. Jordan Clarkson. Mike Conley. And uh, the Joe Inglis. So that was... Um, shit. That was bad luck. That was bad luck. Uh, and the NBA City of Mitchell. Sure. I mean, it's a silver at least, I guess. That's just blue, blue, blue silver? I, I don't know. Whatever. Pretty bad. I'm getting used to it, though. Hale says, Wade. Hey, Wade. Good to see you, man. Um, so, the Larry Johnsons. Uh, this was... I can't remember who this was, but this was on Facebook. Uh, so we got an Upper Deck SE. Just yep. a, a base special edition one. Uh, for the collection. Uh, we got a Hoops Power, and I always maintain... So back in the day, nice. and I don't know if you guys were around collecting back in the day when I was, but these were more common than fish eyes, is the uh, is what we used to say. Uh, because I, I come from a town where everyone would fish, basically. Uh, you know, in the New South Wales Central Coast. So, jeez, um, ah, everything's fallen over. Have one of those days. That's a nice card, though. I like that insert. Very it's, nice. It's such a lovely insert, and a lot of the design back then for inserts were just so much better than what we've got now. Um, everyone Back's will see it well. uh, on Wednesday when we crack this 2021 box of hoops and the break. And I tell you what, like, the new spark plugs look shit. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I reckon, honestly, I, I was in one of the I was in one of their breaks. I was actually in the one. I got it was the random. I got Brooklyn. I got the KD to twenty five, and I think I got the KD to twenty five. The J, Jason Kidd to twenty five. But I got the Kyrie bark plug, and it looks sick because it's it's like a grey and like silver to match the the colours. 
of mm-hmm. their away top, it looked mad. But that was the sickest one. It just happened to be that <laughs> I had the team. Uh, bring back the old spark plugs, I reckon. Bring yeah, back but... Skybox. I want Skybox oh, to be Sky... making uh-huh. some inserts. Man. Don't you just. Um, oh, so sick, man. here's that a Flare cool. Ultra Power. Um, the photos on the Ultra Powers were mm, kind of a bit crappy, to be honest, but the backgrounds, the actual the background. design was just like amazing. So pretty happy to add those into the collection because as everyone knows, I'm a mad, mad person and I want to collect everything. Um, the next one comes to me courtesy of Maddie from the Australian Trading Card Association. Um, we will have on our show uh, next Wednesday. Yes. So it's funny because when we were choosing stuff to give away, we, we gave away, well, it's technically it was over 23 Jordans in the end. Um, he had boxes and boxes and boxes out and he just went, hey, before you go, let me grab you some Jordans because I think you should chuck some in your collection and be real nice. Um, so I'll try and go through these as fast as I can. So we've got some All-Star Easts. Um, because he knows how much I love the All-Star cards. Just something about All-Star cards, they just look lovely. Um, surprisingly, these good old Fleer ones um, are somehow surprisingly worth more than most base cards, and I don't understand why. I mean, the, the set wasn't that hard to get a hold of back then, but maybe just because they were a cheaper set, people mishandled them a lot, so they there's just got some, trashed. There's some really nice Fleer Michael Jordan uh, that that have some really good action shots on it, and I'm all in. I'm all for like in-game action shots. Um, where you know you, you're catching real expressions of the plays, so and I just think Fleer made some really good, had some really good ones back in the day of MJ. And I actually one of my things just picking up low graded, like even a PSA eight, PSA mm-hmm. nine. I was buying them really, really cheap, like 20, 30 bucks. You know, nothing more than fifty bucks graded. And I was just like, just hold. I'm just holding on to them. Yeah, they're just good to have in your collection, not like the league leaders. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I, I, cool. I can't even afford, afford a bloody uh, PSA 2 rookie now. <laughs> Jordan rookie. <laughs> yeah, well, no one can. That, that's a nice card. That is a great I've card. A, I've got a graded one of that, BG, uh, SGC 9.5. Just that's a nice card. Such a good action exact shot. Exact same one. Um, speaking about not great action shots, but still good cards. There's just something about the weird, simplistic design of this that is like... The graphic design on this has been broken down and made so simple for the printing process at the time, just to make sure that this is one of the coolest Supreme Courts out there. I love, it. I love, I love hoops, and I love that it has so much history in the hobby. And that same hoops logo is on the same hoops that was just released. Mm-hmm. That's what's, that's what I love about it. So here's one that I haven't seen before. I don't know what set this comes from. CH4. Okay. But it's very cool. Um, I'm very much a fan of it. Um, we have the uh, Basketball Tournament of Americas, which is a cool hoops card. Um, this he gave me because it brings him back to his childhood. This was one of the first Jordans that he ever had in his collection, which makes sense. Uh, and, oh, he gave me a Game Face. Cool. Game Face Michael Jordan. Very cool action shot. Speaking of Upper Deck actually doing good things. Uh, you were saying Michael Jordan? <laughs> I kid you not, he gave me a lot of Michael Jordans. Uh, we got a hang time see, Michael Jordan. That's a nice card. Mm. You, you see that around a lot, that card. It's so cool. Um, this, I think, was another one of the Upper Deck Collector's Edition or Special Editions. There was like Electric Court was the parallel in these ones. Um, in your face was another one of the ones that he uh, that he first That's started really collecting, because it is probably the most iconic shot uh, of Michael Jordan ever. Um, I remember seeing posters of that Michael Jordan everywhere uh, back in the nineties. That dunking Jordan, this back to everyone, the one that people were like, "I hate this card because I can't see Jordan." Turns out that uh, it's actually a good card. Uh, another major attractions. We're almost there, I swear. Uh, which no, one is I can this? sit and watch Jordans all day. <laughs> well, good, because uh, there's probably Jersey. at least another almost 10 here. Uh, this is one of my favourites, which is the old All Star bronze ones. Because it was back before they were doing foil and cards for a lot of sets. 
um, especially yeah. in like sports cards. So they had to try and differentiate themselves for everyone else. So they did a base set that I think was white or gray. There were Sears ones that were yellow that are pretty hard to get because they were Sears only. Um, but the All-Stars came in as a an insert, even though they didn't have like an insert number, they were still considered an insert because they were so hard to get in packs. Um, Stadium Club Michael Jordan, again, look at that big ass dunk. Oh, that's mad. Just, Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing. yeah, just that's wrecking weird. him. Just straight up over the top. Um, some of the uh, MJ23s. Some of these are right. You know, some of them looked a bit eh, but uh, some of them are very appealing, like this one here, just because of all the red. Uh, let's put you to the back. Get another USA Jordan. Uh, now we get into some of the fun, uh, and I guess we should go with the numbers Jordan first. I actually have one of these that's at PSA for grading at the moment. Oh, you Chess, you're killing me now. I love, I love this. Uh, I love this product to you, death, man. Just wait until we get there. Wait until we get there. Uh, you're going to pull... I know you're going to pull one out. I just got the... Oh, these are so nice. Big finish, which is just... Uh, again, it's one of the Jordans that, growing up, I never got to actually handle or see. Um, which is funny, because I've handled a lot of Jordans, but this one in particular... No idea. Never, nice. never saw it before. It was fantastic. Uh, and the last one he gave to me, which is uh, pretty top heavy or bottom heavy, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, but it's definitely one of the coolest Michael Jordans out there. That's sick. Now, not incredibly rare, but incredibly cool. Nice. It's just so gorgeous. So yeah, I guess now I've started the mini Jordan collection. Not that I'm going to really expand on it. Like you, you grab those that Fleer the last the last three you just pulled out, especially like that Skybox one because I love that. I love <laughs> so Skybox. good. But you look at the designs back then, and they literally hold the test of time. Like you, coming from 2021, the year 2021, you go, I want one of those cars, and you go through it, and you look at cars that are made in the 90s, and you go, that would be probably the sickest looking base car that I've got in my set. Yep. And it was made 20 or 30 years ago. It's funny because I see National Treasures and I can appreciate National Treasures Noir and uh, Impeccable as being, you know, big premium product with a, a yeah. very sleek and expensive feel. But there's one thing it's missing and that is Downtown. Literally Downtown is the coolest fucking insert that Panini have ever made. Yeah. Because they look gorgeous. It doesn't matter who they are. Actually... Probably now the second, I'm going to say the second most gorgeous insert because technically speaking, the Beyond the Horizon and New Horizons from those Horizon packs, the redemption oh, yeah, only ones. Yeah. Okay, like I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give that a plus because they are essentially downtown but better. Um, but those two types of inserts should have all been in like the, the more expensive product. And I get having a case hit is a good idea. But putting those downtowns in a, a middle expensive rather than like super expensive, I don't really understand. But we do need more of that kind of thing in the, in the hobby. All right, um, where are we up to? Oh yes, okay, great. So we're up to some Larry and then on to a whole heap of Carson, including some Carson from Ship My Cards with a big Larry finish, I think. Uh, so. Nice. Top's Finest, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the different Top's Finest later on, but uh, just picked up another Top's Finest Larry Johnson for some reason. I actually thought that I had a copy of this and was buying a double. Uh, it turns out I think that I had a double of the other Top's Finest and not actually this one, which is good. I uh, picked up a, what one was this? Just Flare Metal Base, I think. Because Flare Metal you don't really see around often. Um, and when you do, it's usually destroyed because they're very hard to keep in good condition or even crack in good condition because they're flea metal. They're, they've got a, like a foil metal coating on them. So that's gorgeous. Uh, we picked up a Nuts and Bolts. Speaking of uh, the flea metal universe. Same oh, nice as Kobe. Oh, Fantastic. Uh, and I did get a, a mostly undamaged power zone after the last shit show in the last uh, episode that we did where it was all fucked up because the idiot <laughs> sent it with no protection um this one however uh pretty good not particularly you know the most exciting of inserts to be honest but uh i like it i dig it 
Uh, all right. So. Larry Johnson PT is building nicely. Oh, it's it's getting there. The Carson, however. Um, I, I think now there, I'm. There, there was a little bit of hope for your boy. He got some junk time minutes. We spoke about it on ID, but you know, <laughs> hasn't, hasn't seen a look in since. No. Um, 19, uh, 19 minutes, eighteen points. Then the next game, I think it was like, what six minutes, three points, and then three minutes no points so <laughs> kind of slid his way down um and by no fault of his own uh he he knows what he's there for and he's doing you know as good a job as he can um i think that he can absolutely with with time with getting time on the court he can do you know some wonderful things i just don't think that celtics is the team that is going to allow him to really spread his wings and do that um because they're choked by point guards like you know and he's a small guy and yeah he can dunk but he's a small guy so I, I just think that he needs to be on a team that will allow him to like have the freedom to shoot a lot um to try and get that confidence back up because i mean when you when you're looking at he was out for pretty much the whole season then they go hey carson why don't you come in and, and throw some threes and then he hits like 19 points or 18 points in 19 minutes it's like oh no this kid is now showing you yes this kid has the balls this kid has what it takes but you know, is it just he, he one good game? Can play, and then we thought he should have got some game time, probably the last season when he when he got drafted, and we yeah. thought, oh, he showed something in college, and he looked cool. I, I just don't. Uh, and Sauce and I have discussed this. We don't understand why he's not getting a look in. I understand what you're saying that like they're heavy on the guards and stuff. And is it Naismith came in, and he just played really well? Is it no uh, Pritchard? Pritchard. Pritchard. Good job. Played yeah. really well, so he's just walked in and taken his spot straight yeah. away. Just like, hey but, guys, but, it's me. But, leg but legitimately, their bench is terrible. Oh, I, yeah. I don't care. I can I can sit here and argue with anyone that wants to argue it, but their bench is is a joke. So these guys, it's just great coaching leads to like great output from the bench players. And getting Teague on there is actually very good because it's a it's a veteran guy to come off the bench and and lead a unit, but. I know Sammy Ojale and all these guys, like decent players, but the bench depth isn't isn't the greatest. Like, yeah. I reckon Wanamaker was a great player, and you shift him off. I would have kept try to keep him and get rid of a few other other bench guys instead of him. But it is what it is, and hopefully Edwards can get some more game times because like game time because like you said, he's definitely got potential, and I reckon he's already ahead of a lot of guards there. It's just he hasn't had his had his shot. Yeah, exactly. And it's just one of those things of like, we'll, time will tell, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, I guess I should take this opportunity to call out our sponsor. So this stream, of course, is sponsored by guff.com.au for all of your gaming needs, your Magic the Gathering and your Digimon and your whatever, whatever, your tabletop mechanized, whatever the hell, white dwarf stuff you're playing these days. We, we used to play with pewter figures, kids. Um, and there is a plane, and that makes things very awkward and annoying. People at home probably actually can't hear it because of the filters, to be honest. Um, but also, we do have a break coming up with 15 spots, double teams, $55 a spot. We call this our triple double. This is a box of team or status. This is two blasters of hoops premium and three sellers of hoops premium for $55. There's only like nine teams left, so get into that. And now that that plane is gone, let's have a look at more Carson Edwards. Bam! Why not? Because... I so I bought this uh one of my uh lucky fans I, I guess I'm gonna call you Damien um Damien hit me up and was like hey you're not in this group I saw this Carson Edwards for 15 bucks do you want it and I'm like yes it's like all right cool I'll just like do all the stuff and you PayPal him and I'll take care of the transaction um I feel like I kind of overpaid I would have usually only paid like 10 bucks for it to be honest um but it's a Carson Edwards that I don't have in my collection um and you know every time that i've passed on an encased card even one that is not encased uh it's i've never gotten one back so <laughs> i was just like you know what 15 bucks i'm just gonna grab it why not um this also came from a fan uh from one of the cherry group uh and this was i think i paid there's a group of cards i think i paid like 
30 bucks for or something. I don't remember. I actually don't remember, actually. This one might have been separate. Is that, no, it's number 25? This is, yeah, 4 of 25. Nice. So eBay 1 of 1. Very nice. Because uh, scoring is, is always the best thing. Uh, it's got a colossal patch as well. Just didn't have one of those in my collection. So that's really cool. Uh, is this numbered? Yes, it is. What's it, number 299? Yep. So that's really cool. Uh, we also, speaking of National Treasures, I actually scored another to 25 patch <laughs> of National Treasures because it was really cheap. And everyone knows that if I can find a cheap cast and that's that I think is pretty, I'm going to buy it. One of these days, maybe I'll try and make a run on all of the uh, to 25 cast and Edwards and build my own jersey. Because you can't fucking buy the jerseys, which is really frustrating. Why can't you buy the jersey? Yeah, I know, right? Just Why? I, I guess no game time equals, you know, no merch. What the hell? I know. Speaking Why of... Why can't you just go on to the NBA store and do a custom jersey and ask for cast and Edwards? Oh, screw that. That's too much effort. <laughs> they should have the jersey that's not good enough no well you know not not every player gets a jersey i guess that you can buy no point in making merch that one person is going to buy that one person being me speaking of national Why treasures though, all these cards? i am buying all these cards and all these national treasures I, I will send you a link chesh i have just done a quick search and i have found one for you so I will send you this link. Ooh, yes, please. Uh, so I also got my hands on a Remarkable. Which is very cool. You've got me looking up some uh, MJ uh, inserts here on, on eBay here. Oh, you can I'll find it. I, 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 I also have that open too, bro. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny it because in March, I believe that the Australian Trading Card Association is going to have some Jordans up for sale in Sydney when they attend. They being, of course, myself and Matt. Um, I got this for like two bucks US. Uh, Expressionists Inc. Because at the time that I bought it, I didn't have one in my collection. And then I picked one up for like $3 AU in... Well, it technically was $3 AU because it was in a whole bunch of other Carson Edwards from the last mail time, believe it or not, or the time before. Um, so yeah, picked up another Expressionist. Doesn't fit in the holder well. Um, and then we have other stuff that came back from Ship My Cards. Let's shuffle these around a bit. Uh, so this one here is to 99. What was that? Get off the bench, you bastard. It's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so to 99, uh, one and oh. one Carson. One of one. I love one of one. That's got to be one of my top three favorite products this year. It's I just think it's a killer. Gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It is so underrated. And I genuinely think that there's some one on one cards of autos of, of rookies from last year that, you know, if you believe in that rookie and, and you want to PC that guy, like you should go out there and buy it. I, I shared one about Darius Baisley, literally a, a number to 49 auto, one of one, you know basically selling for 80 usd and then you've got his bloody uh you know his prism selling for like uh you know, at one stage was selling for 100 raw and then you know psa 10 selling for 300 at one stage was 600 and it's got a pop report of 200 and potentially a pop report could get up a thousand like zion um it's just ridiculous like mm -hmm. the fact that you can just buy a 49 auto card for of panini one on one one of the best products of the whole year in my opinion um, for 80 bucks. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, these Carsons and cost me mm, about between 15 and $20 US each. Yeah, there you go. Including this one. Because uh, it's only. Um... Prism, this Prism Silver probably costs more than that. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. I love it. Yeah, the ones I've got up behind me are to, I think, 35 and 25. These ones are to 99. But still, that low. I'm, why would I not pick up an RPA for like 20 bucks? I actually think this one might have been $25 because somebody was trying to outbid me. And I was just like, no, nah, I want it. <laughs> I will have it. I will have it. So, yeah. But speaking of uh, really good scores, how much do you boys know about the... Um, the... Orange Border Error Refractors from Top's Finest? Oh, not much. Hmm. I'm about to get educated. Yeah, so 
for those at home, um, I did just write an article for Cherry. So it's on the Cherry website under their blog, if you want to check it out there. Uh, but essentially what happened was uh, there was different types of foiling that they were testing out. One of them was a parallel to the orange Mystery Finest cards. They decided to go with, I think it was silver and gold, different variations, instead of like doing an actual refractor for their orange Mystery of Finest, which is the base card. Um, somebody didn't get that memo and they fucked it up a little bit because they included 50 sheets. So there is 50 error cards running around into product by accident. Uh, luckily for me, I was sniping somebody's auction um, yeah. on a whim and for $25, now this usually goes for about 140 US, but $25, I got a beautiful PSA 9 oh, Larry Johnson nice. orange refractor error border. That is a nice card. I am so stoked. Is that like a yellow, that's like an orange at the bottom and then it like, it, the border around it is orange as well. It just that's right. It pop. Yeah, the whole thing is, so basically the base card is exactly like this, um, except obviously not a refractor. Uh, the proper refractors, or the, the ones that were supposed to be meh, 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 included in the set were actually borderless. So uh, they okay. had no border at all. Um, so about 50 of these are known to exist. Now, don't let it fool you. The Jordan in a PSA 10 is about $50,000 if you can get it. It's very yes. hard to actually get it, which is stupid, right? Because they just don't what sell. What is it? Uh, these are 95, 96. Um, so the, the PSA 10 Jordans generally don't, from memory, don't get sold very often. One usually comes up approximately once every, I think, 17 or 18 months. And they usually go for stupid amounts. And I'm pretty sure it's just the same people buying it off each other, which is just ridiculous. Um, with this, the Larry Johnson, I believe, has a pop of about 38 in a PSA 9 um, and not many in a 10. I'm happy to have a 9. I'm happy to actually have any graded Larry Johnson in my collection. But getting this at 25 bucks for such a gorgeous card and, like, it looks flawless to me. It is just amazing. And... and unless you can see this in the flesh i mean the camera kind of does it a bit of justice but not the deep oily color that it has on it which is like this lovely rainbow refractor like if if you've ever seen um uh what was it uh bowman's refractors uh generally like that kind of like rainbow refractor in the background like those tops chrome refractors as well uh very much the same thing but they're just an absolute gorgeous, gorgeous card. It's a sick card, man. So, so, so the base cool. version was also had an orange border. As That's well, correct. Like saying, just wasn't one. Just wasn't refractor. The refractor's an error on it. Yeah. Let me just give me a sec. It looks cool with the PSA. Um, no, I'm just looking it up because so. funny, fu funny enough. Uh, oh, actually, it's, it's actually, on top. There we go. It, it's actually Kevin Garnett's rookie year, that 95, 96 set. So I'm trying to look at like Kevin Garnett one. If I found a Kevin Garnett one, I'd be interested to see what it sells for. Jeez, here we go. There you go. It was actually right on top of my stack. So I must have been taking pictures of them side by side at one point. Uh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that way. Oh, I like yeah. that. That is a nice card. Yeah. So it's just funny because, like, they went and decided that this was actually too garish for the set. The orange was too much. And they went, eh, let's not do that. Let's go with a borderless version. And then they went with a, a borderless gold and I think a borderless silver. Um, yeah, I've seen it. It doesn't look as good. No, not as good at all. This looks amazing. How could they... Border looks way better. Yeah. How could they pump and dub this one? Like, nah, just destroy it. But instead of destroying it, the dude accidentally like left the sheets on the trays and they got cut up and put into boosters. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yay for us getting like the sexiest card from the junk wax era when it comes to errors. He's uh it's so good. It's just so, so good. good. I know. I'm, lo I'm looking up the Kevin Garnett's from that set. I know you are, because I am too. <laughs> And if anyone's wondering what the uh, the other types of finest cards, base cards, around looked like, there you go. They're pretty standard. Well, finest was a nice set. It, it was. Some good stuff. Could you imagine if Panini did something like this? 
I would just love it. Oh, and we're not talking so cool. Prism because Prism's fine and everyone goes nuts over Prism, but like these, these are not Prism. <laughs> like these aren't even close. These are so much better in my honest opinion. Like the design of the card is awesome compared to Prism, you know, even the back. Like it'd be nice for Panini to have like some sort of like throwback set that felt like, you know, 90s Junk Wax era. Would that cause people to complain about Junk Wax? Like, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, I, Chesh, I don't know, you, you know, you, you've been around cards probably longer than me, but like, you know, people talk about the, like the Junk Wax era and then you have a look at like, you know, everyone's so focused on, on grading these days and you have a look at some of the pop records in reference to like what's getting put out there now with modern and then the older stuff and you're just like well was it really that much of, like i mean i know there was parts of it that was junk wax um but there surely was you know sets out there that were nowhere near junk and that you know probably weren't as printed as much as as people thought and even back then you know people i just make the point like people aren't opening that weren't opening their cards like they are now with literally gloves and top loaders and and sleeves ready on the go to put your card mm -hmm. in there straight away they were opening it and just like leaving it in a pile chucking it in a shoe box um you know the good people would put it in folders but even folders it's not prone you know it's no guarantee that it's going to be good condition uh, especially if you leave it in a human room or something it could curl the card and you know there's all these factors um so i just i, I just don't think i think um, people underestimate you know some of these older older cards and and take for granted that really they're not as readily available as you as i think the perception of people think that they are yeah so, so look when it comes down to it some of the sets were way overproduced however and this is a big however so with the the fleer set the fleer michael jordan i was showing before with the league leaders and stuff right the the blue yeah. fleer ones we so back in the day we were getting boxes of those from a place called trading faces in broad beach no longer there unfortunately i wish it was because they were the jordan stalkist in australia everyone went to them for everything um their shack and jordan wall was impressive their sean kemp's their larry their larry johnson's like all of that stuff was amazing they had this fantastic shop they used to import those boxes right i was buying those fleer boxes for 30 dollars a box Okay, yeah. I was then selling them in Queensland for fifty dollars a box. So I was making twenty dollars markup, take out travel and stuff, and take out time. You were still making a decent margin on all of that stuff. The same with uh, Upper Deck, Upper Deck Collector's Choice. The one thing I'll tell you is Flair. You had no business in trying to get Flair boxes at cheap because they weren't because they were underproduced. The same with uh, Top's Finest. All of the Top's Finest sets were way underproduced for what the call was, right? The ones that were out there, you either had people that were actually taking the care with the gloves and the different protection methods, but they were still using top loaders, uh, screw downs, right? Screw downs yeah, yeah. are shit. If you've got your cards in screw downs and they've been there since the 90s, please unscrew it, take it out very carefully. If you're lucky that foil isn't stuck to your piece of plastic crap, Nine out of ten times, that card is shit, it's damaged, and your scoring kings ain't worth anything. Happened recently on a forum, uh, on Facebook actually, where I saw somebody selling a scoring kings that was in a screw down, and they refused to take it out of the screw down and coin it, and somebody decided to take the risk and buy it. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Straight up idiot. Do not buy anything in a screw down unless the person can take it out and actually show you the condition on that card. Don't do it. Um, but you're right. So there was a whole heap of sets that were, were overproduced, okay? So Upper Deck led the charge in that and pretty much, I'm not going to say single-handedly, but had a big hand in crashing the card economy for a while. The other thing that did, and it's the thing that nobody acknowledges, Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan's double retirement, right? So the first time he retired, she crashed. People don't remember, she crashed. Sets came out. Um, I opened a box at Christmas, actually. Where is it? I don't remember where it is. I opened a Skybox box at Christmas, and there was literally no real superstar other than Shaq and David Robinson and, you know, the, the people no one gives a shit about. 
right? Because at that stage in their career, no one gave a shit. <laughs> it's just, they're not a rookie card. They're not a big insert. No one cares. So yeah. once Jordan came back, oh, he's back. SP set comes out. Red Jordan, he's back. Then all of a sudden, everything has its back. Uh, he's back because it's upper deck, and they're producing everything Michael Jordan they can get their fucking hands on because the cash cow has returned to the nest, right? Once Michael Jordan then leaves again, no one gives a shit about basketball. Basketball cards, yeah. they don't die, but you know the market crashes, people sell out. Everyone's like, Kobe Bryant. Well, he might be the mumba, but. He's no fucking Michael Jordan. People stop collecting. Entire market reduces. Then we see like a log for a very long time until COVID. Now, don't get me wrong. It has been picking up steadily over the last like uh, probably 10 years, right? Very slowly. COVID hits. Bam. Everyone's back in. Back in, baby. Then everyone goes, shit. What did I do with my collection? And then you have guys yeah. who have held Kobe rookies for this entire time, not realizing what they had until COVID hits. Uh, prime example, uh, Daryl. So Stitch Flamens on, on Twitch, good friend of mine, content creator, uh, finds out the day that Mumba dies that, that his dad goes, oh shit, that's really bad. I should pick up some Kobe rookies. Goes and picks up one of the, the biggest Kobe rookies for like, I think 600 bucks. <laughs> Look at yeah. it now. Look at it now. Holy shit. What was it? Ah, can't remember which one it was. It was the one with the, the I think, sunglasses and the thing. Yeah, anyway. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah There's yeah, actually yeah. probably a link in the Discord somewhere um, showing it. But um, so he picked it up really cheap and was like, came back into the hobby. He's like, hey, Chesh, what's this worth? And I was like, how much did you buy that for? He's like, oh, I don't know, pretty cheap. And I'm like, my God, you know what that's worth? Like, you know, your investment's now like tripled already cool excellent but the thing is that you know the sets were overproduced but also the whole michael jordan leaving cards is what helped to crash it right so then you've got all these singles that are back in circulation you're right that you know some kids would have just like ripped open booster packs but there's enough middle-aged men at that point who were collecting michael jordan that looked after those jordans and you know after like other stuff that kept things in circulation now what we're yeah. seeing at the moment doesn't make sense from an investment point of view now i don't want to say that i'm hashtag a finance guy i try not to be <laughs> i there's oh my i work for a fortune 500 company uh i work in corporate uh, i work with money every day and i fucking hate having to work with money and i wish that if i had just enough money to buy my own house and have a business i'd be happy right because i handle millions of dollars every week I, I hate money. I really do. I hate the side of it. I hate the smell of it. I hate money. Not many people are going to tell you that. But I can tell you right now that if you are still holding on to Michael Jordan rookies, there is a shitload out there. There is. Have a look at the pop reports. There's a shitload of graded Michael Jordan rookies out there. However, people aren't moving them on. And that's what's pushing the price up because now we have a whole new batch of like hedge fund kids that have come back into the hobby, right? And they might not be kids. They could be like middle-aged men like me who have more money than sense and they're spending, you know, $200 on a Lamello Ball rookie. Go and buy my rookie. Um, it's, it's only at 154 on eBay at the moment, I think. Hang on. How the fuck is this possible? Like... Uh... You, honestly, yeah, but this happens every release, Chesh. It happens every release. I'm not surprised. Hey, don't worry. I'll just let everyone buy them for $100. And, and, and in three months' time, when there's all these new sets out, and everyone's forgotten about hoops, I'll just uh, you know, buy the Lamellos for like you know, 10 bucks each. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so if I just... So one of the things that, uh, that I think that you need to... Oh, yes, if you want them. Uh, yes, I want them. Yes, sorry. Message is coming through while I'm doing this. Um, so one of the things that you've got to remember is what happened last year. Here we go. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Please keep bidding on it. I love it. I love it. Fucking okay, um, crack the one fifty. <laughs> what you've got to remember oh, is uh, last year. What happened with 
Zion. Now we're gonna we're gonna do a, a thought experiment here where Zion was the premier rookie last year. Um, it's been slipping a little bit this year, obviously, because you know, there's, you know stuff that doesn't really matter to be honest. Uh, the same with Jar Morant. Um, when those rookies first hit hoops, and hoops were like what 250 200 to 250 for a box yeah and yeah. then hobby uh -huh. was like 300 <laughs> to 350 a box not like 600 dollars that it is now that's a separate that's discussion enough. that we should probably have um how much was a base zion card oh so uh, you definitely i was I, I was buying nba hoops zion cards at the beginning for five to ten dollars yes max. exactly $10 max now I bought a shitload of them too. <laughs> what happened once COVID was in full swing? Uh, thirty to fifty bucks, easy. Yep. At some point, and maybe there were yeah, probably about fifty bucks at the height. But like then it settled around thirty, thirty mm -hmm. to thirty-five. You could get for them. If you really wanted to move them on twenty-five, they would get you know snapped up instantly. And when I was buying them for five dollars, like I moved quite a few of them on at twenty-five to thirty dollars happily. Mind you, at that point too, I was buying um, uh, Giannis NBA Hoops rookies for forty dollars too. <laughs> yep, cool. exactly. Right. So we're in a different era now, right? Where rookie cards, we have a lot of investors coming in. We have, I guess you could say, a lot of um, Gary V followers. Not to say that I think Gary V has done anything wrong. Gary the V, is, I call him. Gary V is very much on the side of like i bought this because i feel like it's a good investment for me you should probably buy it it's not pump and dump he's literally pump he's yeah, not he's not no, no, dumping no, we, love, we love gary yeah yeah we love gary it's just sometimes the followers and stuff it's not all of them but they just lose their marbles because they, they may not be educated on the hobby or they just buy sporadically but th what you said is actually perfect just backtracking like two seconds there when you said like hedge fund kids are coming in and investors and are starting and, to come into the hobby. And I think that, that's charlatans more... like Vegas yeah, I... Dave. Yeah, but I think that's <laughs> that's why I think um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but vintage is definitely going to be the winner now. Like Vintage is absolutely the, the winner. I've been telling because... people for the last two weeks, 1988, Fleer stuff, get it now. Yeah. Get it, hold it. You can't get Jordan rookies. It's not going to happen now, right? Last week when I was telling you to get Jordan rookies, you know who you are, and you bought your Jordan rookies, and you know how much money you made on that, right? This week... If you try and get those Jordans, those same Jordan rookies, they have now gone up 100%. That is ridiculous. They're now two times the value they were in a PSA 5. Don't buy into Jordan rookies now because, yes, they might go up if you're lucky, but you're buying in at the premium. If you buy in at 88, you've got the Jordan sticker. You've got the Jordan base. It's technically second year. There's a lot of other good stuff in that set as well. If you can find a silver box for like five hundred dollars, make sure make sure that it's actually properly sealed because it's very hard to tell with those boxes. So buy off somebody reputable. Don't just buy off an eBay user. Um, preferably an auction house who can verify that it is certified as sealed. Um, and then crack the box and grade your Jordans because you are going to get usually plural Jordans from an 88 box, right? I've managed to yeah. open, I think, one 88 box in my life. And I can tell you right now, when I could pick up those boxes at $50 a pop because people were just dumping them, I wish I had have just bought a whole stock of them. I wish I had have just kept sealed cases because I, I didn't think yeah. at the time. I was just like, oh, I'll buy myself one box to open. That's fine. And then, oh, they're going up. I'll just sell for the contents. And like yeah. now it's a point of like those boxes are hitting, I believe, up around the $500 mark. And if you can still yeah. get them sealed, properly authenticated that they are sealed, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that you should invest in it, but I can tell you right now, if you get a very close to 8, 9, 10 PSA on those Jordans, they are going to keep going up because they're obtainable still. You can still get a PSA, what, um, 9 for approximately five hundred dollars 
you know, five to seven, maybe. So yeah. that is a good thing to invest in right now if you feel like you want to invest in something. However, if you've got the money, invest in sealed fucking boxes and sit on them. Yeah. Hoops, Hoops Premium uh, is is a good product. Yeah, we were going to touch on this before. Mate. Well, exactly. You know, but it's it's that thing of like, do you want to take that long shot that's possibly going to fail? Or are you going to take the long shot that means that you have a particular rookie set that you know has got Jar and Zion in it? Are you talking about the 1988 Fleer basketball no. box? There's one on bids currently with three days to go at 7k. Well, there we go. So now they're fucked. Great. Thanks. <laughs> well, they weren't a couple of, uh, probably a couple of months ago now, I guess. Someone's selling that empty box for 50 bucks. God. <laughs> Why do people do I, that? I think, I think that Jordan now is just like anything that's got Jordan because the way obviously collectors value the hobby for second year cards for players or third year card for players just in general Holy like that. Shit. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, I yes. can't believe this. I, I, let me look at the last souls. Let's, let me just, let's get some real data. Well, while here. you're doing that, um, so Wade says, uh, anyone who's interested, hit me up on Instagram. I have some Jordan base from the 90s. I'm happy to donate to anyone who pays the postage. Maybe 10 or so Jordans at the Down Under Collection. Nice. So, shout go. out, Wade. There's one for the punters out there. All right, so last sold. So you're telling me you could have picked these boxes up for 50 bucks, Chesh? When was no, this? No, ages ago. 500 no, bucks. ages ago. You're saying 500. Yeah. 500. When I, when I had the chance to pick them up, they were 50 bucks, and that was like, God, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Oh, okay. It was a long time I'm ago. Say, it wasn't like in the last 24 no, months. No, no, the last 24 months has been stupid for everything in the hobby. Okay, well, this last one sold for 13,000, 1988. Sealed box. Yeah. There you oh, go. there you go. Not bad. It means you're not going to pick them up at 500 go. bucks anymore. That's kind of sad. This is it's fucked. But the other thing as well with those investors are when people come in with money and they're like they're investing smart. People need to remember people invest money to make money. So that's why they're going to go for safer bets on like unopened wax, like sealed products and stuff, and and vintage guys like your Jordans, Kobe's, and LeBrons. They, they they don't want to lose money. That's why they're outlaying big dollars. Exactly. If they're gonna go. They're not gonna go outlay a million dollars on a Lamelo ball card. The <laughs> fact that he could he could flop, and they lose everything and it tanks. So, I mean, not the investors who have the brains. Yeah, correct. Like <laughs> the big big money, you would have thought that people actually have the brains, but they. You got to look at it kind of like a stock, literally. Uh, you got to have that mentality with those cards at the moment if you are like buying and flipping and stuff but even if you are trying to pc uh guys that you like is all it takes is one good performance for modern day guys and you're probably not going to be able to complete your pc on certain guys because they just skyrocket exactly literally 2x or 3x their price just based on on a freaking ridiculous game so always be vigilant i guess and do your do your research. Yeah. Also, I'm just going to point out something. Do not go in a single hoops box break at $29 on a random team. This is why. Don't fucking do it. Don't enable I that was, bad behavior. I was going to mention this, Chesh, and, and this is you know, part of where we've gotten to how the box prices are. Um, you know, you've got these, these people that just have you know uber amount of money and they just come in and they buy sealed cases of product and they just sit on it and they know all right you know i know you know of a guy who's buying just sealed cases and everything mosaic right 400 bucks a box and then all of a sudden now you know the the season runs around now those boxes are going for like 750 you know 750 800 they've like doubled and you know then he sells those off to breakers and then obviously breakers then need to still make their little bit on top of that and then and that's just how the box continually continually gets inflated because you know now the bra the breakers have got that much uh, cash flow well well some breakers not all breakers <laughs> but you know some of the breakers that you know have been have been lucky enough to been on the gravy train before the covoid sort of uh, pump and maybe the years before um you know the 12 months or 24 months before that and now they've got money to, you know, oh, buy a case for 40000 and then break that down into boxes. And, you know, the fact that I'm watching 
you know, people going in breaks in in America and literally just getting filled on Instagram for like, you know, uh, stuff with 18, 19 prison in it and, you know, some of that stuff, um, even 19, 20 prison and at $300 US a spot. Um, you know, the, some of them, they do, they do like 15 spots and that, but still it's just like ridiculous. Like I couldn't imagine going in a break and spending, you know, essentially 450 Australian dollars for two teams and going in a three box break or something like that. Like I just, I, I just can't comprehend the, the value in that. There's no value in that at all. Like you're, you're literally pissing away money. You're b- better off taking that $450 and buying a few cards that you want to PC or buying some cards that you can flip. Um, there's so many ways that you can spend that $450 better in the hobby than to go on a break. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. And that's the only reason why I mainly I go in breaks is if I get in half a case or a case. If I'm in like some shitty two box break, three box break, I, like I just don't see the value. Obviously, unless the value is there in terms of what the box prices are, like mm-hmm. when you break it down. Um, and there, there was one guy I was actually getting, going in prison breaks last year for like, I think, you know, uh, two box breaks for like you know 35 dollars in prison stuff at one point at the start when it first came out and obviously as the prices got out of hand he couldn't get his hand on more product at a decent price and you know he he fell away but you know i went into a few of his because i seen the value in it and you know i keep a couple of cards in there um but it's just it's just amazing that people are just gonna continue to enter these breaks when there's no like the value the chance of you actually getting value out of the break is very very slim to none mm. um and well yeah, I, it's just see, i'm it's I'm amazing in that, i'm in that vein as well because i i do go in a lot of breaks and obviously we do some breaks here as well but we try and make them as affordable as we possibly can um uh, because you know obviously despite the fact that i have an abn i don't have like a physical store overhead or anything like that um, the electricity is, uh, you know, it's a daily thing. I have, I work from home anyway. So the amount of electricity I use, I'd be using on gaming rather than breaking. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you're right. Like, and, and it's the point that I wanted to point out because somebody, and I'm not going to call out the store, but somebody recently made what I consider the shittiest post ever because it didn't describe what was going on. It was basically like, don't go in other people's breaks, only go in my breaks because I'm the cheapest. Like, good fucking for you, mate. Good that you can get your boxes from a distributor unlike anyone else because a lot of people fucking can't do that and a lot of people can't get their boxes at a good price. However, that being said, if you can see that a box at Cherry is $600, and you can then calculate the amount that you're paying on that break times the 30 mark. And you can see that a break is costing you 900. In other words, $300 more, $300 more than what that box is worth. Maybe you should consider not breaking with whoever the fuck that is you're breaking with, right? Yeah. Because, and, and to be fair to Cherry, their box prices are comparable with anything you get from the US, right? Um, probably a little bit over because they have lots of overheads like you know actual staff because it's more than three people that work at Cherry then I think people just don't realize that they have an entire fucking team you know they have a physical location that costs a lot of money because it's in the CBD even though it's you know near the the wharf side it is still expensive to have that physical location there Um, I know that you know myself and and Maddie are looking at, you know, physical locations if we want to, you know, eventually try and get something retail off the ground. And it is expensive, right? Even here in Mooney Ponds or wherever we do it, it's going to be expensive. We know that. But yeah, always calculate. And it, it's not just, it should be what you're getting out of the break. It should be your first calculation. But if you're going at a random team, you, you know, you know that you're probably going to get shafted. That happens to me all the time. But calculate the cost of the boxes, calculate what the approximate amount is that the the company should be profiting from it, take out postage if they are not charging you postage, if they're doing it for free, which is what we do, but then again, we just send all our shit snail mail, and if somebody wants it express or something, they can pay the extra, which is fine. Um, But I see a lot of businesses around right now, and not even businesses, but a lot of breakers going, go in my break, hey, I, I stand to make $300 minus, well, I guess my overheads because I'm asking you to pay postage. And that is fucked. Like, for the price that 
uh, and I, I've calculated this, Steve Stafford from uh, Trading Card Community does breaks as well. For the price of this other person's break that I won't mention because I don't want to slander and make them feel like crap, but they should, um, I could go in Steve's break at half the fucking price. It's a two box break. This other place is doing one box and it's double the fucking price. Why? Why are you doing that? Like, it is absolutely obvious to me that there is an imbalance here that people just kind of don't they don't see it because they don't calculate it because all they see is their spot and what can I possibly get out of this random for my $29, my you know $40, my $50. But what you should be doing is balancing out, hey, what does this break actually cost overall? What is the chance I'm gonna get something I want? And do you know what? Save your money up and buy a fucking single that you want. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, we're, we're the same with that. If you can get, like uh, you both saying, if you can get a really nice card, put it towards that. That's not the gamble, like, in the end of the day. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Depending no, on no who your PC. <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> no, no, disres no, no disrespect to anyone in the hobby, but realistically, like, if you want to go out there and, and gamble it for a random team, it's a bit different if you're going in a, in a team and you select the team that you want and you know, okay, I'm chasing this card for your PC. But like you're saying... If it's a random team, it's literally gambling. You don't know what you're going to get. Oh, it's just been in one, so I'm not going to... Like, I thought I'd have a crack. It was hoops. I haven't been in a break in ages, and I jumped in, and by fluke, I got Brooklyn, and I got some really nice cards. Mm -hmm. So I'm and not going to complain. It, but it is luck. I could have, on the other hand, got... Who's terrible? Uh, you could have got Utah. I could have... Well, I could have got Utah or... <laughs> Thanks, Just Jack. To rub it into shit, shit in. Utah. You want to buy some John Stocktons? How about some Carmelones? I've got plenty. Yeah. <laughs> there's sil there's yeah. Silvers and Discos. Uh, silvers and, and Lasers, sorry. You just want them? No? God damn it. <laughs> no. No thanks. <laughs> oh. But it is... But yeah. so, so, like... I, as I said, I go in breaks all the time, not with Cherry, not just with Cherry. Um, like, I've got stuff here that I got from boxbreak.com.au, um, yeah. Westos cards. I could rattle off, like, yeah. several different ones, like MJ trading cards, um, you know, really, really cool dudes as well. Um, so I do. I go in random stuff, and mostly it's because I'm paying for the entertainment more than anything. If you are an entertaining breaker the likelihood that I'm going to go in your break is doubled because I want to hang out with you. I want to talk with you. I want to hear you interact with your chat. But some yeah. of these breakers that are charging, you know, way over what they should be, they're not even, they don't even have personality. I just rattle off the cards and that's it. Like, talk to me. You know, fucking. I'm not. I'm not saying you have to flirt with me. That you have to like. You know, <laughs> tell me that you're gonna get into my pants and play with my dick. I just want you to like be my friend. I want you to like, you know, talk to your audience. And if you crack something really nice, I want you to call out that person. You know, and say, "Hey, man, sweet, sweet pool. Look at how good this is." You know, because that is that is your fucking job. Your job is to be entertaining. Break is about entertainment and not always about the product. I mean, price is a Correct. huge factor we've been talking about, but yeah. Um, yeah, so mm, I, I guess what I'm saying is I probably wouldn't have gone in even half the breaks with Cherry, to be honest, if it wasn't for Blake. Like, because Blake yeah, is well, but, charismatic. Blake and does a very, yeah, exactly. He does a very good job. And then you look overseas as well, and there's some really good breakers. Yeah, like um, overseas. Uh, uh, Lays Rizzo, Lake. Rizzo Sports is good. Uh, Pool Wax is very entertaining. Um, uh, uh, little pool man is very good as well. Like, there's some good ones, really, really good ones. Um, mm. pool pen pac LA, pac man breaks, pac man breaks, coffee breakers, like, but they're into uh, mully cards, mm. he's very good. Um, they're just out there and they like interacting with the chat, like you're saying, they got it down pat, yeah, they really do. When people come into the chat, they just lose it and they're like, so-and-so's in here. And it's really good. It's entertaining. When they get a big pull, they lose their mind or it's just awesome. Yeah, because building but community that's what it's all about. is a big it's about thing. entertainment. Yeah. Ah, that's a good chat. 
Definitely. Do we do we have anything else? Did we cover everything? I feel like we covered everything. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Whatever you want to we're cover. Not, we we, we went off on a, on a tangent about breakers <laughs> and no 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 uh crack at yourself, Mr. Chesh Breaks the man. Actually, it's funny. But, do, um, do, do you do you want to know we, how we, I came out with the name Chesh Breaks? Actually, and I, I don't, don't actually know if I've ever spoken about this before. So. When I was first coming back into the hobby, I absolutely came in with the idea of doing content because I do a lot of Magic the Gathering content. Um, I'm a big Magic the Gathering content creator here in Australia. I'm one of the biggest commander content creators. Um, I've freelanced for uh, a couple of different websites, including MTG, uh, Pure MTGO. I've done sponsored streams with Wizards before they had their whole like turnover of their PR staff. Um, I've run events for them at PAX Australia. Um, I come from the video game and movie review world. I'm actually an ex-media reviewer um, who has freelanced for a bunch of Australian sites. Um, but when I came into it, I was like, oh, so when I open a box, it's a box break. Not a group break, it's a box break, right? So yeah. I am Cheshire Plays Games when I'm doing my magic stuff. So Chesh, right? Hence the, all the purple because Cheshire Cat, right? Yeah there's, yeah, there's one actually up there with my Frankenstein's long story. Um, so I went, well, just put them both together. I've got Chesh Breaks, Chesh Breaks, Kraken Packs. So Chesh Breaks was what the channel was called. And I got into doing breaks because everyone thought I was a breaker because of Chesh Breaks. And every fucking Facebook group was like, hey, no advertising your breaks with your YouTube channel. And back then I wasn't breaking. I was like, no, we don't break we don't do group breaks we break for us we're breaking retro wax because it's fun that's the link we're yeah. sharing out oh we just thought you were a breaker sorry no advertising and then i was like well if you're gonna call me a dark i'm gonna fucking shit on your lawn like a dark so i'll become a breaker <laughs> so we started breaking stuff so that we could like upgrade the channel have a little bit of money to play for for you know retro stuff retro stuff starts drying up of oh, what do we do now um, and now I have an ABN tied to Chesh Breaks as of yesterday, so I'm actually a fucking business. Ugh. Very nice. Congratulations. Thanks. It feels gross. <laughs> I yeah. feel like my day job overlord. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Chesh Breaks actually came out of that whole situation of people thinking I'm a breaker, and well, now I am a breaker, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how did double coverage come about? Oh. Dude, you've been fed. Uh, do you want to answer this source, or do you want me to answer it? No, we just sort of we just sort of brainstorm a bunch of names, and we just went with it. Uh, we had a, we had like a few other names on the card, then, <laughs> but like we I don't know we just came up with them. I'm like, yeah, let's, we didn't really think of it. Much. Like we 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 weren't too um sort of creative, um, and then yeah, we're just like, oh, we'll just go with double coverage. And then, yeah, that's literally the, the, the makings of it. It was, there's nothing really behind it. We just didn't want to think about it too much. We're just like, we just want to start making content. Yeah. <laughs> we just Behind behind the logo and stuff is the colors. Like the color scheme is because of, um, we love the Miami Heat City Knights jerseys. The first ones that they put out, the black, black and pink ones. So we love those. And then we're just like, oh, yeah. that looked pretty cool. Looks a bit like GDA Vice City. In terms of like the <laughs> the best the best damn GDA ever made. Yeah, Correct. so we're like we G'd up over that. So we said, yeah, we'll go with that. But like the idea of it in terms of like us two doing it together is because we have been friends since oh, I reckon since Kinder. I reckon we, we've known each other. This so explains a lot. <laughs> Kinder, we went to primary school together, and then we went to high school together, and then we went to uni together. Actually, funnily Jeez. enough. So, but it was more like at high school, our mates would come to us and talk to us about like basketball and AFL and and soccer. Like they were like, these are the two guys that ask us, oh, what do you think on this? And it's like, oh yeah, you know, we could do something like a podcast when podcasting was coming out and becoming a thing when we're in, in uni. But like we said, we didn't have, have the time and yeah, COVID came around and was the was the lifesaver. <laughs> the big catalyst of, of a lot of, of us, I think. Of, of the idea. So, mm. yeah, now we're here and um, chewing off your ear every Wednesday. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I appreciate it. That's for sure. Thank I don't. You. I don't always get to catch you live, but yeah, 
I'll, yeah, I'll no, always no, catch it's it. More, yeah, it's more for the, just the podcast. Like, we go live, and it's good because we do interact with everyone on YouTube, across all social pla- platforms, but it's more... It's on there for the video, and then Source can grab the audio and export it there on, on Anchor and get us out there to as many spots as possible. So... That's the thing. We're just we're here for everyone in the hobby, I guess. So <laughs> that's that's the aim of our game, really. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for everyone else. So that's my little uh, marketing <laughs> of the of the podcast. The spiel of the there. podcast. We're here for you. <laughs> yeah, we, we we just hope we bring people value. And like, I mean, it's really nice when you when you get good comments and when you get people like, um, you know, sending in DMs and stuff and saying, uh, you know, nice things and. And it's just you know it's a bit flattering because you know we we're just two idiots sitting behind the screen that <laughs> exactly. have some have some so, sort of that you know me have some sort of media skills in terms of editing and things and putting it out there and i was like oh yeah i guess i better use those uh skills that i you know wasted all this money to go to university to, <laughs> you know to you to learn to not ever use them and i was like oh fuck it i better use them at some point so i just <laughs> went about uh and, th- and this is like the you know the startings of hopefully something uh big uh especially with the way that the the hobby's going and you know i think this is part of how we keep the hobby alive mm-hmm. um you know having content creators and having people to for other you know ha- having content for other people to to listen to in that evolves around the hobby um so and yeah and it's all the content creators have part to play on this because uh, you know not for anything when the when you know it, it fell on its ass what in the 90s there was no internet there was no instagram there was no facebook well, there was no social media not technically all that sort correct of shit, right there was internet um, so, but you know it was all bbs boards Ah, it's it's freaking it was forums, yeah. Like you, 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 you couldn't forums. go live. From, you couldn't go live from a handheld device. Let's just say that way, right? <laughs> Most people um, didn't even have a handheld device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. It was bloody. It was a brick, and I had a massive oh, antenna. If you could the... fucking afford it, I, I got <laughs> I got my first brick at uh, I think eighteen, seventeen or eighteen when I started working at Big W, and it was a Nokia. No, it was an Ericsson. It was a Sony Ericsson. Um, before it was Sony, I believe it was just Ericsson, and it was like the black brick phone. That um, yeah, it was like you know, a big brick that you would hang off your belt, quite literally, because you couldn't put it in your pocket because it's massive. Um, and it was something like the plan was, um, I think, oh, I'm gonna say back then it was, and you had to pay outright about seven thousand dollars. We're talking in the '90s, so now that's like inflation, say probably about 13 grand for a fucking piece of shit mobile that had you know no games no snake or anything you didn't get that until the uh (laughs) nokia 310 workman phone to be honest i think that was the first iteration of snake was on the 310 which uh had the latex outer core basically so you had the the phone core in the middle and then you had the the what they called the outer core at that point which was the uh latex cover with the keys on it so that if you dropped it in a pool in a river in a bucket in your beer you know on the road it wouldn't smash it wouldn't drown it wouldn't smash it was like the workman's phone you could take everywhere you could walk out in the rain with it <laughs> sorry just just from memory 28k modems bbs boards what oh god yeah i know how it's changed it's just unbelievable but uh, we're lucky we're lucky we have these tools now and as John was saying, like we can create content and kind of be those preservers of the content and and keep pushing it out there and promoting it and getting new people. And new people in the hobby isn't a bad thing. Um, we spoke to Charlie from Cherry about this. It, it's actually not a bad thing. It's a good thing. If, it, if you educate them through great content, they'll understand how the hobby works, things, things like what not to do when it comes to packaging cards and or you, you'd hope if they get educated and and obviously scamming people you don't want that shit in your hobby so i'm, I'm gonna have to start I, I funny enough uh, i actually had someone a family friend uh, contact me this week going and yeah, asking me about cards um 
and you know he'd been looking at him for a little bit and and he was talking to his friend and he just and he knows that oh, you know, i'm into this and he's, he follows me on instagram and he actually um you know contacted me he wanted to buy some some justin herbert you know rookie cards and and so essentially what ended up happening was i ended up getting on a phone call with him for an hour and a half sort of pretty much giving him his uh you know introduction to the hobby 101 you know what, <laughs> what you know what variants you should be looking for if you're buying rookie cards you know understanding all the different sets understanding you know that if you're buying you know a thick stock card don't expect to get it that it's going to be you know in a pristine condition because it's you know thicker cards prone to damage, yeah. more prone to damage you know and then you know making them understand the difference between like the, the sets prism optic uh the main you know sort of investor sets that people like to collect the most and then there's obviously all the underlying sets that you know you can find potential value in you know if you find nice stuff and it was like you know i'm thinking about i should just start uh you know uh putting up uh, uh consultation calls uh 101 <laughs> uh, hobby talks uh with uh, saucy collectibles that i'll just uh, get on the phone with you for an hour and just fill you in, in everything you need to know about the hobby in 2021 so <laughs> look i i'd say that sounds like a great idea except one one nine hundred saucy is going to sound like something completely different <laughs> <laughs> One eight hundred oh, saucy. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, and you can't even you can't even call it saucy service either. That's, <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> Jesus, uh, we'll take you out to the ball game and give you a good hot dog and. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But it's fun, man. Honestly, it's so good content creating and like meeting everyone is just awesome. And but the thing is, as well, we have you don't have that chance to meet everyone in person because of what's happening, COVID and yeah. whatnot. But what you're planning on doing with Matt is the perfect opportunity for all of us to get together and yeah. actually meet each other and network and do all the stuff that, like, fortunately enough for. for people in the hobby over in the states they've got like the dallas card show and they've got the national and they all get together there and they meet up and they network they have that luxury uh because we don't have that we're a bit behind but as i was saying to you before we we jumped on here we're only scraping the surface with the hobby mm -hmm. in this country um, and, and we're in australia and, like it's hard and we're in australia yeah it's it's funny because i i heard somebody recently it might have been charlie on cherry when he was speaking with matt but it was somebody on a, a podcast recently was saying you know like uh content creation in australia you know blah 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 and they said something or other and I, I just thought like well no that's not exactly true like it's it's actually much harder to get the eyes on to try and like get those people watching your show watching your content because we are in australia um and I, I take this from you know magic the gathering and again i'm i'm the biggest magic the gathering commander content creator in australia yet i only have like 700 and something subs on youtube you know because it's hard for australians to get other australians to watch their content because it's hard to get those other australians to figure out who you are and find you you know Correct. um in, unless you are already somehow ingrained in that if you're maybe an admin of a facebook group most of those facebook groups won't allow you to quote unquote advertise you know and you're not really advertising you're trying to make people aware of your content which is something that i understand that they don't want breakers doing their stuff but if it's a non-breaker video uh, such as something like a mail time like this i don't understand why they don't let that on their facebook this is where cherry has come in for me you know straight from day dot you know, speaking with Charlie and the crew, Cherry, Cherry straight up saying, hey, I'm doing content creation. Here's who I am. Do you mind if I post my video in your in your group? And they were like, dude, seriously, no, go for it. Like, we don't see a lot of this kind of, you know, come through and we'd like to see more of it so that everyone's aware that content creators are out there and are trying to, like, engage with the community. Because, um, again, for people in America, you have all these big fucking events. You have yeah, these ways to network. Australia doesn't, not even on the MTG side. We have like one massive MTG event per year and that is it. And that's not even per year. It's usually like 1.5 years, right? So yeah. the Australian Trading Card Association uh, 
is trying to build that here in Australia so that we can have a nationals, you know, because there's no reason why we don't already have a national event that also has satellite events attached to it, where it's like, hey, this event travels around Australia, you'll get smaller events around Australia, and then a big fucking event during the year, you know, with like international guests, with guest speakers, with people like yourself doing, you know, content, like, because obviously we, we want to have guest speakers, we want to have podcasts, we want to have hopefully some live breaks that I don't know if we'll have an internet connection for, technically speaking, we're going to work on that. We might just have to be recorded and uploaded, which is fine. But it means that you can do a break live in front of a live audience. And yeah, you know what? That's probably a bit fucking nerve wracking when you haven't had to interact with a live audience before. But it means you can sit there and you can like still have your list. You can still interact with that crowd and call out like really cool hits. It just means you won't have a chat there particularly that you can sit there and rummage through for, you know, like somebody says this and you respond to it maybe we'll be yeah, able definitely. to find a way to do that i think there is a way that we can do that if we can get a stable internet connection um but that is something we're looking at um but there is like shoot around competitions and stuff like that for the kids you know because we want to make sure everyone's involved and it's not just nba we want to make sure that literally every sport gets represented in some way even like hockey because my partner loves hockey you know and so for them yeah. i'm going to drag them in and go hey you love hockey here's hockey cards yeah definitely. it makes sense um and obviously COVID's... The, the other thing the other thing as well that was touched on last week when you when matt sat down with you was um quite an eye-opener in terms of like i don't understand i don't think people really understand the enormity of it in, in just yet like when when you mentioned that forty thousand people walk through the doors of comic-con last year in melbourne alone um funnily enough i i, I laughed to myself to the fact of like those forty thousand people that walked in there whether there's a sports card section there there is a very very vast majority of those that are into magic the gathering mm -hmm. pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. So out of those 40,000 people, you automatically, as a, as a hobby store or as a content creator, you can tap into all these people to help grow the, the, well, the, the card network beyond its belief in this country. And that's, that's what puts us on the map as Australia, really, for the exactly. rest of the world. And, and also, it like, you, it means you're also getting coverage from everyone who covers Oz Comic Con from other content creators who might be doing cosplay might come along Correct. and like see something like cool anime card game that they want um keep it family friendly please um, yeah. no no weird <laughs> hentai card games i will absolutely burn that shit in front of you and throw you out in your ass um family friendly family friendly i'm not going to be saying cunt live on stage um, yeah if we're, if we're creating content there i don't think uh, it'll be an explicit podcast no, it might be the no. only one ever yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, and that's the thing, right? So like, we're going to try and have something like where we can have guys like you come in and do your podcast live, you know, that's awesome. That is fantastic. That is such a great idea because it's giving away the content creators can also get an eye on a way that smaller operators can get an eye on, you know, a way that smaller businesses can maybe get an eye on. Let's break open the hobby. Why are we restricting the hobby at this point to like Facebook groups? You know, if we can open that up to more people, then it's better for everyone. And if I'm sure that Cherry will probably be involved at least here in Melbourne at some point, you know, because they obviously have like a great market opportunity as well, but they also have yeah. like a great share of that market because they do, they are starting to do their like gaming hours with their Pokemon and their Digimon. Correct, correct. And that's something that we do want to harness. We do want to harness everything because training cards isn't just sport. It's not just NBA. It's all of these different things. And we want to make sure that everyone is A, welcome and B, has something at that for them. So that hopefully they'll come over and they'll go, hey, here's some cool Pokemon. Oh, wow. Is that NBA? That looks really cool. You know, or maybe they do come for NBA and then they see some Marvel Masterpiece stuff and they go, holy crap, X-Men looks amazing. I haven't seen X-Men since XYZ 10 years ago, whatever, you know? Yeah. Or maybe they're a cosplayer and they see that or, you know, something. But the idea is to open the space 
as much as we can to try and get as much feet as we can across there. Oh, definitely. I reckon you're both onto a great thing and you're doing great work, so definitely keep it up. How the fuck did this become about us? God damn it. (laughs) Well, we're here to help the hobby, so... (sighs) I blame you. Yeah, you can if you want. Everyone does, I guess. So... (laughs) 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 Nothing new. (laughs) Nothing new. Uh, uh, all right, let's do a sign off. So, where can people find your shit? Uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, t- uh, Instagram, and then Saucy will just uh, rattle off the rest. But it's at DBL Coverage underscore on Instagram, and then you can find us where our Saucy. <laughs> you can find us across Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, we are on LinkedIn as well. So, I mean. All of the medians we're on there, probably except for Snapchat and OnlyFans, but maybe we might get to an OnlyFans <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so you can find us there. Uh, every Wednesday, we usually do our pods and uh, we've got daily content coming out all the time. So, yeah. So we've got a few new things. Saucy's uh, starting to get in front of the camera a bit more. So <laughs> being good. Uh, abusing those Instagram reels. I love them. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> So, yeah, on behalf of us, like, thank you so much, Chesh, for having That's us all right. We, Thanks for having us on, Chesh. Anytime. I, as I said, I do listen to your podcast. I do love your shit. So, thank you. you know, otherwise thank I'd you. tell you to fuck off. Yeah, well. <laughs> Quite frankly, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's fair enough. Um, as for me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook under Chesh Breaks. You can find the break group at uh, facebook.com forward slash groups slash Chesh Breaks. If you are a content creator... Or if you are a, a store or a breaker and you want more information on what we're doing with the Oz Comic Con thing, especially with the March pop-up in Sydney, if you are in Sydney or if you're traveling to Sydney, please hit us up. You can find us on the... Uh, one, nine, seven, eight, one second. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I set up the account. You think I can remember the at, but I don't. I just remember it as like the Australian Trading Card Association, um, which I guess on Facebook, uh, you can find us on the Australian Trading Card Association. Um, on, yes, on the Instagram, you should be able to find us at uh, Oz Trading Card ASS. So, Oz Trading Card ASS. Ass. Yep. How you doing? Uh, Why and did you try to get APCA? Was we that did. Taken? It was taken. So I just went oh, for the easiest it. thing and I went, that's fine. And there's Deanna trying the back of my phone. Enjoy that. So Star Trek, the card game. I actually have like a box up there. Uh, <laughs> just you'd, you'd be all, surely you'd have uh, Star Wars cards. Nope. No, not a fan of Star Wars. I am a fan of Star Wars. No, I don't have any Star Wars cards. I've got a Star Wars man bag down there somewhere that I wear. <laughs> I think like a porter bag, but uh, yeah, no, no Star Wars cards. Just never had the opportunity. Um, Mandalorian came out, and I was like, eh, maybe. And then Tops Chrome, I found some Tops Chrome, and it was too expensive, and I was just like, eh. So yeah, no. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll definitely, obviously, do this again at some point. Maybe I'll come on and, and harass you on your podcast at some point as well. Um, but definitely. next next Wednesday. At what time do you have Matt on from the Australian Trading Card Association, which we should probably plug him as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, source 7.30? Yeah, it'll be 7, 7.30. Yeah. Just follow our socials. Follow us on socials because generally we'll, we'll put a time out there. Um, um, yeah, we'll have him on at the beginning of the show to chat about it. And obviously, you know, we'll have a chat with him and might even ask him a few questions about his uh, nice MJPC. Oh, that he it's has. so good. Um, so yeah, that'll be, we're, we're stoked to have him on and we, we want to probe more and, and get involved with what's going on. Cause we think this is, uh, the beginnings of something special in the hobby. Something huge. Definitely. Yep. It's about as good as I can go. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone have fun. Uh, and thank you guys for coming on and uh, have a lovely night. You too. Peace. Peace out. At least you're not going to say double curve.